We've been told for years that fiber is a must have for gut health, and that without it, your microbiome will crumble faster than a stale bran muffin. But what if I told you, you don't actually need dietary fiber at all? Sorry salad, apologies artichoke, bad news broccoli. Fiber might not be as essential as you've been led to believe. Now, before you throw your kale smoothie at the screen in frustration, let's break down the science together, because the truth about fiber is way more complex and interesting than simply good or bad. And importantly, if we don't address the nuances of this matter together, we will never advance the discussion. So in this video, I promise you, I'm gonna review facts about fiber that you should know, things other people might not tell you or might not be aware of, citing data on fiber and inflammation, microbiome diversity, short chain fatty acids, and I'll also explain where fiber elimination can actually be therapeutic. Now this video, it's meant to advance a conversation, not end one. With that, let's dive in. Inflammation. Some people argue that fiber-rich foods are anti-inflammatory, but that's not entirely true. For example, a landmark randomized controlled trial published in the journal Cell found that some people were inflammatory responders to dietary fiber, meaning when they ate fiber, they had more inflammation. Reading straight from the paper, taken together, these data suggest divergent immune system responses to the high fiber intervention, with high inflammation participants exhibiting broad increases in steady state immune activation, which means inflammation. To be clear, this was not the majority of participants. And it's also worth noting that those with lower microbiome diversity tended to be the inflammatory responders to fiber, raising the hypothesis that there might be protocols by which one could train up your microbiome such that it responds with a healthier anti-inflammatory response to fiber and fiber-rich foods. It's possible. But the fact remains that some people do have a pro-inflammatory response to dietary fiber, and that this could have negative health consequences and contribute to or exacerbate chronic diseases. Another interesting discovery and point on this paper is that fermented foods were far more universally anti-inflammatory. So as a practical tip, if your goal is to reduce inflammation and eat an anti-inflammatory diet, I'd capitalize on kimchi over broccoli. Make sense? Okay, moving on. Microbiome diversity. One point that's often raised is that fiber depletion or elimination will decrease microbiome diversity, which is a presumed marker of good health. We're gonna unpack that in a moment. And this is fair speculation at a population level. In fact, it's even speculation in which I myself have engaged. However, there are deeper nuances that I heretofore haven't gotten into. First, microbes in the gut can feed off more than just fiber, and eating a low-fiber diet does not necessarily lead to decreased microbiome diversity. For example, in one impressively comprehensive case study, a man who had been on a carnivore diet for four years had his microbiome compared to that of omnivores and plant-based people. And reading from this study, the comparison showed surprising results. The carnivore's gut microbiome did not stand out with regards to alpha or beta diversity, indicating that it did not lack richness or diversity when compared to its omnivore counterparts. And the study also reads, our study indicates that adherence to a carnivorous diet does not cause detrimental changes in the gut microbiome. Instead, it suggests the effects on the gut microbiome are due to combined influences of dietary regime and lifestyle, rather than just meat consumption alone. Further research is needed to identify which components of the carnivore diet could act as prebiotics in the absence of plant-derived prebiotics and maintain gut health over time. Granted, this is a case study, but even an N equals one is sufficient to make the point that even with complete fiber elimination for four years, the microbiome doesn't just get starved off. It's not that simple. 
And if you want to toss another really interesting wrench at this microbiome diversity issue. If you can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball. What? Oh, oh. <sighs> Consider that more diversity isn't necessarily better. In fact, in a recent 2025 study published in Cell, researchers tried to restore the human gut microbiomes of those in industrial settings with a diet mimicking non-industrialized dietary patterns. And ironically, the diet they chose was primarily plant-based, featuring beans, sweet potato, rice, cucumbers, cabbage, artichokes, peas, and onions, but this plant-based diet decreased microbiome diversity. I'll repeat that. The plant-based, carbohydrate-rich diet decreased microbiome diversity. Nevertheless, some cardiometabolic benefits were noted, including weight loss and improved inflammatory markers. So the big picture takeaways here are two. One, a low fiber diet, even a no fiber diet, doesn't necessarily decrease diversity. And two, more microbiome diversity isn't necessarily better. Okay, moving on, short chain fatty acids. Another criticism of low fiber diets is that they will reduce levels of beneficial compounds made by the gut called short chain fatty acids or SCFAs for short, which are the products or thought to be the products of bacterial fermentation of dietary fibers. However, when we look at the human data and consider the physiology, the story evolves. For example, in a 2024 randomized controlled trial comparing people eating a low-fiber ketogenic diet for 12 weeks to people eating higher-fiber diets, short-chain fatty acid levels, including the key SCFA butyrate, were not reduced on the ketogenic diet after 12 weeks. Furthermore, it's worth noting that the ketone body beta-hydroxybutyrate has structure and functional overlap with butyrate. No surprise, right? You can tell from the names. In other words, even were butyrate levels reduced on a ketogenic diet? Again, this was not the case in the study, but even if it were the case, beta-hydroxybutyrate can carry out many of the functions that butyrate can, including fueling cells that line the gut and stimulating various important cell surface receptors. So, simply put, a low-fiber, low-carb diet does not appear to reduce short-chain fatty acid levels. Okay, finally, therapeutic fiber elimination. It's important to bear in mind that every person's circumstance is different. And some people may be dealing with gastrointestinal conditions that could actually benefit from fiber reduction or even complete fiber elimination. In some cases of irritable bowel syndrome with constipation, fiber elimination can actually improve constipation. As reported in this widely circulated report, where those who stopped fiber intake completely had increased bowel movement frequency and 100% elimination in symptoms of bloating and straining. Sounds pretty good if you have IBS with constipation. And for those with inflammatory bowel disease, IBD, fiber elimination can also be beneficial. In fact, treatment-resistant cases of Crohn's disease are pretty responsive to fiber-free diets and can be prescribed and promote remission in 60 to 85% of cases. The mechanism is thought to have to do with changes in the microbiome, particularly in an intestinal pathobiont called mucus beryllium, as has been reported in this paper in Cell Host and Microbe which you can read if you want more. And of course, there is our case report in which 10 people on a carnivore diet went into complete remission from inflammatory bowel disease. Now, I'm not saying our case series is gold standard evidence. I think it's pretty good. It's not an RCT. But there's no denying that these patients, these human patients benefited and lives were saved. These are real people with real stories. So what's the bottom line here? Fiber isn't inherently good or bad. It's about context and individual responses. Your N equals one story, your N equals one microbiome. While fiber can be beneficial for some people, others may actually thrive on a low fiber or even zero fiber diet. Gut health is not one size fits all. Now, if you found this video insightful, don't just leaf, stick around. Click that Brocco like button digest the subscribe button, 
and feed the comments below with your thoughts. Stay curious. I hope you appreciated the nuance on this topic. Fiber isn't so simple.